scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. All physical things that we seek, all physical things that we seek are only expressions and conveyors of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing i'll take it again all physical things that we seek are only expressions and conveyors of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing through that car you hope to find something else through that marriage, you hope to find something else. Through the increase, you hope to find something else. Through the anointing, you hope to find something else. Through the political position, you hope to find something else. Do you know why I'm helping you? I'm helping you with this teaching so that as you seek to have physical things around you, you will have it at the back of your mind that nothing in itself that I have or ever have will give me what I'm truly looking for. So you can enjoy the physical blessings by having this knowledge that if it is fulfillment I am looking for, these are not the things that will give it to me. That way you can become wealthy and wise. You can become exceptional and wise. Why? Your wisdom comes in knowing that none of these things in themselves can give me fulfillment. Then you start looking for what will really give you security in a deeper way what will really give you variety in a deeper way what will really give you acceptance in a deeper way look up please can i tell you this if you don't answer this question and trust god to help you as a husband you will find yourself beating your wife every day and if they ask you why are you really beating this woman you will say she does not cook well if they probe you you too will say honestly i don't know why I will tell you, you are, you are hurting somebody because of something you are looking for. And because that is the obvious scapegoat around you, you will land it on the person using the guise of any story. Same thing with wife. You can turn and say, my husband is not responsible. And then after you cry and you are done, they say, what are you really looking for? And you say, I don't know. I can tell you what you are looking for. You are looking for what money cannot give. You are looking for what marriage cannot give. You are looking for what employment cannot give. You are looking for what entrepreneurship cannot give. You are looking for what a designer cannot give. You are looking for what travels across the globe cannot give. Genesis 37 and verse 15. Please give it to us. Hmm. And a certain man found you Rigma rolling around life and a certain man found you with a pile of enemies on your blacklist and they say what well, what is all this about and he said what are you really looking for why do you have enemies everywhere you go from this company you have enemies from that company you have enemies look at the kind of person i am i don't allow anybody to insult me what are you really saying i have a problem and I'm yet to deal with it. So the obvious is to blame anybody I can blame. Can I tell you, 
when you have a problem with too many people the problem is you because you interpret life from the lens of your own limitation when you have a problem in lagos abuja london kaduna uk the problem is you nothing physical I remember a story of a man whose car got burned and the man killed himself I wonder what you will find out where he will find out how foolish he was by killing himself because the car got burned now I don't mean to insult you let me tell you why the man killed himself because that car burning seemed to have an impact on his mind based on the awareness that my self-worth is tied to this reality and now that that car has gone what will my family people think of me can I tell you this if you understand this message I am teaching you it will bring you permanent deliverance you will strive to be successful but you will know that there is something greater than success so you will not postpone your joy till the day you build the mansion you will start rejoicing today if they ask you why you will say I know that even my 10 years is not what will give me joy and fulfillment no hmm. the narrative that most people have and I say this respectfully the narrative that most people have especially in Africa unfortunately is a narrative that has been sold by social media is that the moment you have money Remember the one million thing I said, God bless you, and you shouted amen. The moment you have money, especially lots of it, your respect, your esteem, everything. You have photos of people with all kinds of priority vehicles there around wearing designers, the latest this, and there is a craving in you. I must get it anyhow. Let me give you an advice before time. There was one who already got it before you hear what that person said vanity upon vanity now you have to understand the person who the Bible says was speaking the Bible did not call him a businessman the Bible called him a preacher he's saying where you are hoping to get to I have already gotten there I can tell you there is nothing there in itself this is not a call to a life of mediocrity and carelessness it would challenge you to aspire to get your dreams and your goals but let me tell you sincerely as you seek to become all that God has created you to be I give you an advice because the world of a of the great is very deceptive they arrive there and then they sit and they check to see if that craving has been satisfied and they find out painfully that like a drug who that will satisfy you for a short time and you are back to yourself that's why they get angry so all my labor of doing this and building that i thought it would give me that sense of significance and yet it does not give you anything what then satisfies these cravings if a car cannot really do it if a house cannot really do it all of those things carry with themselves little expressions we we call them feelings it's a word that we have invented to help us relate with the kind of energy or that that sense of pleasantness that is derived as a way of checking one of these six lists again i give you a car key you rejoice because something comes out from that car a feeling that I am successful a feeling that I am not a failure and when that feeling comes that's it one day you will be tired of the same car you once rejoiced about one day you will be tired of the same phone you are now holding and rejoicing about one day you will be tired of the same hair you are wearing now that gave you joy one day you will be tired can you imagine remember during the inaugural service here in koinonia remember how we rejoice over this beautiful place the excellence the ambience now we are tired of it and we are trusting god to go to another place 
I visited Redeemed and I saw the one kilometer by one kilometer that was built. And I thought to myself, what was in Baba's heart when this came? Then they got fed up and tired of it. Then they moved to three kilometer by three kilometer. Our father in the Lord, Bishop David Oedeko, they are building the ark now. Remember, for a long time, he celebrated the 50,000 capacity seater. And one day, that thing again. He said, let's go for the ark. I can assure you by the God of heaven, if Christ tarries, except age and other things, but if Christ tarries, usually, and every time he blesses people, he will tell you that there is even a greater one coming. Why am I teaching you this? Because I want you to be both successful and fulfilled. Let's define fulfillment again. That it is the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. I've had the honor and the privilege by the grace of God to be around people who were diagnosed with terminal diseases or people who were, they literally knew that they were on their way going. I've had the honor of praying with them. I've had some healed miraculously. But in all fairness, there are others that I prayed and I knew that probably these people, their time was up. And at that time, listen carefully, we have to borrow the mindset of a dying man to understand what fulfillment is about. Once you are not a dying man, you cannot really comprehend the wisdom behind seeking fulfillment. You have to borrow the thinking, the last minute of a man who is alive, who is transiting the earth. There is something about that wisdom you must capture. And that is what will help us tonight. What does a dying man look for? Imagine, don't be afraid, just imagine that God told you right now that by 12 midnight today, okay, you will be afraid of going to heaven, but he's coming. In any case, whether you are going or he's coming, you people must meet because I don't want you to say I'm confessing negatively, you know, believers, some, the way we think sometimes. But realistically, imagine that the Lord told you today that Joshua Selman, by 11.55, you are going home. Question. I know you have investments around the world. I know you have all kinds of things. I know you plan to travel next week. I know you even plan to do a lot of things there. There's a TV interview somewhere. But what will become your point of focus with that knowledge? Just one information was passed to you that you have three more hours in this life. And that's it. Three more hours. Wrap up whatever you have to do. You have three hours. No prayer will change it. Three hours. You are not sicko, and it's not going to be accident. It will not be anything. Once it's time, God knows the many ways he will pick you so that you don't fear. But you just have three hours. Think for a moment. What are you going to do? Remember, your, home, your hometown is more than three hours, so don't even think of running there. Think of something wiser that you will do. Three hours. I'm about to share something else with you, and then we'll pray. That's why I'm asking you this question. Do you know, I will tell you this. I can give you an idea of what will happen to you. Hmm. In that moment, I give you a guarantee. Nothing else matters. Nothing else counts. I'm in the presence of my maker. Listen, when you are right there, you may think of your businesses. You may think of your investments. You may think of your certificates. 
you may think of your wife you may think of your husband you may think of your parents you may think of your children you may think of your future and your goals your plans your house under construction you may think of the person owing you and the police case that is still pending you will think of all of these things and yet you will be surprised that none of them at that point will be able to bring you satisfaction listen carefully there is only one thing you will be looking for at that point when you stand with the consciousness that I have only three hours to live in this life there is only one thing you will look for it is called peace write it down hmm. John 14 27 the peace of God please write it down everybody write it down peace when trouble blows Jehovah sees Jehovah knows he is my peace Jehovah sees do you know remember three hours to end your life and yet it is not another degree you want it is not another political office you want three hours it is timing by now it will be less than the three hours it is not whether you like it or not non-negotiable three hours then you will now have the wisdom to look for what you would have spent your entire life really looking for the thing you are looking for at the point of death is what you should find first in your life and have the privilege of enjoying it because I will tell you in that security in that variety in that significance in that acceptance in that sense of growth in that sense of achievement all of them are various ways of saying the same thing this is one thing you are looking for peace how come you only find it when you are hours to the end of your life whereas that is really what you need even from the start of your life and can you imagine that it is available even before you find any of these things that you can have it without a car you can have it without a child you can have it without a church and yet we ignore it but when you are about to go when every other thing fades you find out that is the real thing so when i crave for security what i am really looking for is peace hmm. when i crave for variety what i'm really looking for is peace when i crave for significance what i'm really looking for is peace when I crave for acceptance, running away from trouble, what I'm really looking for is peace. When I crave for growth, what I'm really looking for is peace. I know you won't believe it if I tell you the reason why you are running around with your CV is that you are looking for peace. You will say, Apostle, you are wrong. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> you are right in your lifetime. But back to my story, few minutes to the end of your life you would discover that what you were really looking for was not a job that what you are looking for is not a travel abroad or a second citizenship when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did I live my life to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward 
will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and never after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life John 14 and verse 27 listen to what Jesus the wise has to tell you dear one who has been given the gift of life peace I live with you my peace I give to you not as the world giveth give I unto you he said let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid i have given you something the fear that comes as a result of lack of a job i don't mean to get you emotional but everybody who died in the train that was headed to kaduna by the time they left abuja they had plans when they woke up that morning they said i will return back in the evening and when i return honey i'm rushing down to kaduna to do something quickly i just want to check my building and they did not know that they had three hours left i know you may not see the wisdom in what i'm teaching you today i'm not saying you will die but i'm giving you wisdom that is greater than investment wisdom can i tell you this it is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you find a house it is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you have children it is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you have money none of those things have the power to give you peace i can tell you they may carry with them expressions of conveniences that may minister security may minister variety but security variety significance love and acceptance growth and advancement impact and contribution are psychological ways of looking for the same thing peace jesus said i've given it to you i don't give you when you finish your degree i don't give you when you finish your masters i don't give you when you finish your phd i don't give you when you become a professor i don't give you when you are 60 years right where you are before you even start your journey you can carry the peace of god when you find a house is just an added advantage but peace is there even if the house goes your peace remain as god grants you children you are celebrating the children and dancing but not without your peace can i tell you no matter what you lose you did not lose if what you have left is peace but no matter what you gain hear me you really lost if you lost your peace on the way many of you start with that gift of peace you throw it away to look for a wife you throw it away to look for a husband you throw it away to look for a job you throw it away to look for ministry increase at the end of it watch what you have children a name a private jet money in your account in various currencies a political position titles qualifications no peace where did you keep it and you find out that you left it in 1980 you threw it when you began your journey looking for other things and at the end of your life you will say house give me fulfillment and house says not my assignment degree give me fulfillment it is not my assignment all of them will say my assignment is only to give you success once we help you to become successful our mission is finished in your life what then gives me fulfillment peace hear me 
the only thing that can give you fulfillment in your life is the peace that comes with knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7 Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7 and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding it says shall keep your heart and your minds when you read the preceding verse verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing anxiety Nigeria please look at me there is such anxiety right now I want to make it I want to make sure that things work and I assure you by God God is more interested in your success than you are even interested the God that we serve is more determined except that we have been given a wrong narrative that things give success and they also give fulfillment I am here to tell you by the authority of scripture and the wisdom of those who have gone before us that the limit of everything you will ever have in your life is the realm of success when you pass the realm of success only one thing is qualified to pass with you your peace and if you throw it away looking for the other tokens of success a root shock will be waiting for you at the end where that line is drawn my peace I give to you let me tell you this and I submit to you by the God of heaven I thank God for everything that he has done in my life and I thank God for all of you and our global family who have contributed to helping this life attain some level and some measure of success but I thank God because I learned early ministry is powerful it reveals Jesus but on his own as an art or an occupation does not give you peace I can tell you traveling around the world I don't care whether you go with first class business class private jet it will not give you peace the same weather will shake every plane it doesn't matter where you are seated the plane in is the, the space in a first class business class economy if if the weather shakes it the whole plane will shake if that plane crashes everybody there will crash now I'm tempted to sing it again there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones only a Yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end one more time there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are only a shoe only a shoe write this down aside from your relationship with Jesus Christ aside from your family and aside from your assignment nothing else is a do or die affair write it down aside from your relationship with Jesus aside from your family and aside from your assignment absolutely nothing else is a do or die affair listen carefully listen carefully don't be distracted aside from your relationship with Jesus aside from your family aside from your assignment there is absolutely nothing else in this life that is a do or die why are you allowing the issue of the job to kill you are you that cheap to give it the power to kill you why are you allowing the fact that you were not recognized in an occasion this thing happened january until now you have developed you are almost sick 
because your ego was torn. So, those who left, who today have gone to be with the Lord, I imagine them sitting respectfully. Some of them are your loved ones. I don't mean to get too emotional. But when they sat in that train, as it started, they didn't know the clock too started. The same way you are seated here, I'm not trying to be a bearer of bad news, but you are closer today than you were in the morning. I don't care how long the time is. Just know that when you woke up this morning, you are closer to that moment. Believe it, cast it, say in Jesus' name, I don't agree. Safe journey. I can assure you by the God of heaven. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, among the many things that you remember, remember, it is minus one day to that moment. So when you are fighting and dragging for your ego, let wisdom stand in between to separate you. And say there is no time for this remember what you should not lose lose the business but don't lose peace lose whatever but don't lose peace huh. remember the wisdom of a dying man money will not do you much at that time it does not give fulfillment so as you begin your journey and as you explore everything you are trying to explore look up please there is a kind of desperation many of you are giving life that will end up hurting you. It's an unnecessary desperation. There are the things that matter. The chiefest among them is peace. Tie it around you. No matter what happens, refuse to let your peace go. And at the end of your life, you will find out that peace brought you houses. You will find out that peace brought you certificates but you will wave them at the gates of success and peace will escort you gallantly into the realm where only few ever get to it's called the realm of fulfillment you will stand there with joy knowing you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and whether he comes to meet you or you go to meet him you can wave earth goodbye with joy because it's the same peace that goes with you. Jesus said, my peace. Africa, hear me. It may look like we've lost everything. Nigeria, I know the cost of fuel, the cost of diesel. I know that terrorism is everywhere. People have lost their homes. People have loved their loved ones. And if I ask you, what do you have left? I know you will say nothing. Let me show you that in all that you lost, you really did not lose anything. Because there is something Satan wants to take. My message is to help you to protect it with all you've had. I may lose my family members, but I have peace. I may not have gotten the job yet, but I have peace. I may not have had ministry expansion yet, but I have peace. The gifts of the Spirit may not yet be at work in my life as a preacher, but I have peace. Someone shout peace. peace. So listen to me. Psychology and psychologists call it security and you need to be secured. They call it variety or dynamism. They call it significance, your pedigree. They call it love and acceptance, that, that craving to be handed a right hand of fellowship into circles and spheres. They call it growth and achievement. They call it impact and contribution. The master only calls it one word, peace. So, when God blesses me with a house, or when God blesses me with whatever life can offer, I enjoy it and I thank God for it. But at the back of my mind, I remind myself that none of these things, these things are expressions of the mercy and grace of God, consolations to my effective living, but never the basis for it. That the reason why my life is effective is not because of these things. The reason why my life is effective 
is that I will at the end of my life have the peace that comes with knowing that I spent my life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. Listen to me. Someday, very soon or later, you will have the opportunity to stand before the coffin of someone you know, someone related to you. I pray not you, at least not soon. But you will have a cause to stand. Every time you stand there, let it remind you of the message of this preacher that money does not give fulfillment. Money can create an environment that gives you efficiency and redeems time. I do not downplay these things. I have taught you and will continue to teach you the principles of the kingdom. But there are many people today who have peace but no car. They will tell you I am a failure. They have peace but no house. They will tell you I am a failure. They have peace but they've not gone abroad. They will say I am a failure. So says the narrative of ignorant people. Come to the world of wisdom and God tells you no matter what you have, if peace is the foundation, you have something. No matter what you have, if you lost your peace on the way, you have nothing. You will keep submitting your prayer requests. Even before the end of the service, I'm going to pray for you and declare that all the things that need to happen in your life for all these six things to happen will happen. And provided you are engaging the word of God. Remember my teaching last week, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Inevitably, you have results in your life. However, please hear me. I have told you here in Koinonia, I stand before the God of heaven and I'm speaking to the whole world. And let me tell you sincerely, you see this work, Koinonia? I love you passionately with my heart and for as long as God grants me breath, I will keep driving and striving to give my very best. But apps, I can shut down Koinonia this night if God says so. And believe me, I will go and rest the restfulness of a successful person. Because my success is not derived in these things. Man of God, give yourself rest. This headache and high blood pressure. There are people in their 20s, their high blood pressure is as if they are cooking something inside them and their pressure is rising and going down. You ask them why they say, Kai, life, I must make it. This must make it is killing people. It's good to be excellent, to excel. But let us be careful. This is a word of caution. Of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness to the flesh. Hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. Politicians, if you don't win election, don't kill yourself. I'm saying it in advance. Don't kill yourself. It is not a do or die affair. When politics becomes a do or die affair, you will do demonic things for it. Business people, it's good to prosper. But while you are in that transition building wealth, be patient and find peace. You can still smile even when your account is red. My sister, I know you are still trusting God for the child. Let the naysayers keep saying, are you a man or a woman? Don't mind them. God will soon answer them in grand style. But in the interim, do not starve yourself from sleep and say, oh God, when will you visit me? No, his peace is him with you. He's called the prince of it. Are you learning? Yes. Most times people see the enormous work that God is doing. And you know, they feel that, ah, apostle, you must be thinking. Your head is going left, right, and center. I said, me? <laughs> you are joking. You don't know me. I'm busy, but I'm not busy doing many things. No. I plan to live a successful and an effective life. Give yourself rest. The real estate company will come, but not by worrying. We're wrapping up. Matthew chapter 6. 
Only Yeshua will reign forever. To your kingdom, there'll be no end. Only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom, there'll be no end. Let's begin our reading from verse 25. Everybody, please pay attention. I'm about to speak over your life. Therefore, I say unto you, believers who love Jesus, take no thought for your life. He's not saying don't be careless. He's not saying don't be intentional. He's not saying be irresponsible. That's not what he's saying. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink or yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Look up please. Is not the life more than meat? and the body than raiment next verse behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are they not more are ye not much better than they 27 which of you by taking thought look at this now the word is worrying which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his business one cubit worry does not add anything it only takes away everything worry is a devourer it will come and take what is there that you do not know is there you may not have anything but god has given you health and if you allow worry worry will take the health that is remaining you may not have anything but God has given you quality relationships. Worry would take away the relationships and leave you worse than you are. 28. It says, why worry or take ye thought for the raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, the Bible says, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Next verse. Yet I say unto you that not even Solomon in all his glory is arrayed like one of these. 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? 31. Please look up. It says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 32. It says, after these things do the Gentiles seek. Remember our teaching now? What are you seeking? The Gentiles seek for these things because they think in them. This is the reason why most people, even when they find them, they are afraid of their results and they want more. The reason why most people may never be contented in life is because they want more than money. They feel that by the time I have all of it, then I'll be satisfied. One billion, they are still looking for it. And it is not that there is an assignment tied to it. Can I tell you? The only thing that should necessitate your continually wanting to attract more money is the building of the Lord's house and kingdom assignment. No matter how greedy you are, if it is for your personal comfort, there is an exact arithmetic limit of money that when you have as a Christian, you can live as lavish as you want to live, you will still not exhaust it. If you want more, kingdom come must be the basis for it. But if it's just to fuel your lust and to try to give you security, you are wasting your time. 33. But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you please listen to me ladies and gentlemen the lord gave me this word tonight because i believe with all my heart that someone here someone watching you are about to kill yourself you are about to commit suicide because you think you are a failure there are others you are not committing suicide by carrying knife to cut yourself but your worry is already reducing your lifespan every day preacher don't look at the joshua selmans traveling around and every poster carrying their faces and allow the devil lie to you and say you are not doing anything 
and you now say look why is it that people are not placing a demand on me and you get into a lot of nonsense that is not in the blueprint of your prophetic destiny because you are trying to match up with a narrative that has been given can i tell you after service here many of you are going to go home you will see many wonderful people enter their beautiful cars and drive past you and you may not have a car yet or the kind of car you would want to be proud of chances are excellent that in the presence of all that the wonderful cars are passing you may feel angry and start insulting them wicked people they stole our money mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. manage your anger with wisdom it is not them that is your problem there is a battle that has no business to do with that car it is a craving in you to succeed god already calls you a success the fact that you can have his peace is is great success so every other thing that comes it should only be an added advantage and not the basis for your joy i can tell you the truth i am more comfortable today than i was 10 years ago than i was 20 years ago but believe me i stand before the god of heaven nothing added to my life today has made me happier I know you won't believe it but it is true I found out that no matter how many beds I have in my house all of me only lies down on one side not even the whole bed whether you is rectangular or whatever it is one side there will always be an empty side you sit down on the many chairs you have no matter your size it will be one chair at a time you can't cut one of your leg and put in one jeep cut one and put in another one all of you can only enter one look at me no matter how greedy you are your hand will only hold one spoon at a time even if you eat with the serving spoon is still one counts at one i will never teach you mediocrity but again i love you too much to allow you have a miserable quest for things that will cost you your eternal destiny and will cost you your peace anything that wants to take your peace is not worth it i repeat anything that wants to bargain with your peace is not worth it whether politics whatever it is no parents some of you have children that are extremely stubborn and are giving you headache and right now your concern is not the rehabilitation of the children your concern is your ego and your reputation so that you are not perceived as having lived a failed life can i encourage you by the grace of god ignore the naysayers find peace god knows you have done your best as a parent even judas was part of the ones that jesus worked with and even jesus if you rated him based on judas you would say jesus failed some of you here you've been downsized you lost your job when you started this year god spoke so powerfully about the year and by now you've lost your job you are just sitting down here saying apostle i don't even know among the many things you should not tell yourself is never tell yourself you're a failure simply because where you get up and go to every six to five decided to send you away and you carry this treasure that you are called and say you are a failure simply because nothing around your life actually makes you a success or a failure it is a definition of your perception especially when it has to do with fulfillment if we don't teach this let me tell you you see this thing called ritual killing it's only at its infancy you will start seeing people do unbelievable things because society has defined a narrative if i am 25 years old and i cannot buy a jeep and stay in a mansion i'm a failure if we sell that narrative let me tell you the generation coming will surprise us you will see witchcraft at levels you have never seen before because the obsession to show preachers we have to be careful respectfully speaking the reason why you see many people getting under pressure especially younger ministers 
going everywhere to receive laying on of hands going to go and do all kinds of demonic things do you know why because we have sold a narrative if there is a crowd here down to the basement overflow there are posters everywhere there's the protocol walking with you apostle joshua selman you are so successful and a young man will be watching and say ah my life must be like this i give myself until now to september and god is saying son you have peace be patient i'm working on you and you say no my colleagues have gone be careful with this colleague thing my colleagues have gone ahead of me they now have houses i am here your destiny is not the same god is building and making something out of you and can i tell you let me give you a kind advice if you are part of social media groups that sell some of this nonsense to you and they start torturing your peace how do you can you go out of that thing go out of it immediately it's not by force give yourself peace don't look at your cloth and say my own cloth is 500 naira until i start buying clothes of 1 million five. Who, who told you that show me the verse and the scripture now, again i will repeat i'm not teaching you mediocrity i'm showing you the pathway to genuine fulfillment can i tell you little with peace is much you don't know the worth of peace until your days are wrapping up when you are not somebody who has the time limited you may not see how expensive peace is i found the reason why i sing i found the reason why i sing i found the reason why i sing I found a reason why I say Jesus the 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 reason why i sing peace is 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 the reason why I know the reason why I sing. 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 And I will be still. And know you my God my soul be still and know you are God when the oceans roar and thunders roar I will soar with you above the cloud Father you are king over I will be still and know you, I God. My soul be still and know you, I God. At the end of your life, there are only two things you will be remembered for the problems you caused or the ones you solved let me repeat it at the end of your life there are only two things that you will be remembered for the problems you caused the joy you took out of lives the mockery 
the heads of people you join together the pain you brought for people or the fact that you stretched yourself and did your very best maybe you did not do everything but that you did something I made up my mind it is not my goal to do everything and solve everybody's problem in this life that's a futile venture but I made up my mind that for as long as I have breath I will do the best that I can to help anyone and everyone who can experience Jesus in and through my life I will do my best as I travel to the nations and do everything I need to do I do it because I love Jesus I do it because I love you however it is a revelation that I've given myself that while I do the many things that I do I will guard the peace of God jealously it is the one asset I have not the building not the clothes none of those things you are going to pray we have two prayer points this night and then I make an altar call the first prayer point listen carefully the first prayer point is going to be an answer to Genesis 37 15 wallowing around the field what seekest thou I tell you what you are going to tell the Lord you are looking for Lord I confess that I need the cars and the houses I need the promotion the visas I confess that I need the political positions but there is one thing I'm asking you that above and beyond these things you give me let me find fulfillment fulfillment is what I am really looking for lift your voice and pray pray for the grace and the wisdom for fulfillment more than results and more than success cry from the depth of your heart koinonia fulfillment fulfillment please pray is someone praying you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you are everything keep praying fulfillment you are everything you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you are everything ah. you are everything you are everything pray for fulfillment at the end of my life let it not be that i just bought cars acquired degrees gave birth to children made a name became a veteran politician became a veteran in the military became a respected name became a great man of god with a great congregation no give me fulfillment oh god the gift of fulfillment garnish my destiny garnish my achievements garnish my results and my success with fulfillment the satisfaction that lives in me knowing 
that I am and would have lived my life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity don't be tired pray you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you are Someone pray. Fulfillment, oh God. Save me from the folly of living a profitless life. Just pursuing things at the expense of a fulfilled life. Pursuing names. Pursuing titles. At the expense of my peace. No physical thing. No material thing no matter how great believe me sustains the power to give you fulfillment at best they can be expressions of success around you and they are important and god will give you but none of them can pass the gate of success hallelujah last prayer point last prayer point if all I was talking about was peace, then why did I go the route of security and variety and significance and love and acceptance and growth? Do you know why? Because even though peace is the highest and the greatest in truth from a psychological standpoint, these are the things that must happen to you listen to me many of you are depressed today in your life because you are craving for security many of you are depressed in your life because you are craving for variety many of you you fight with everybody because you are closely guarding your fragile ego you may not admit it but that is the reason why you are enemies to anyone you can't make friends with people for two weeks you must fight because you should call me apostle joshua selman and you said joshua selman do you know who i am i interpret for you what you are looking for you are trying to say it took me a lot to piece together this my ego don't trivialize and deflate it through dishonor love and acceptance there are ladies today respectfully speaking who will say yes to anything and anyone provided they, they get a sense of acceptance whether the man has 30 wives they will say yes provided he will say i love you no there are people who want to grow they will cut corner and corners and do anything our world of fake life and fake living is because people are looking for growth stand behind somebody's car and snap and say it's your car there are drivers that have snapped in front of houses of their bosses i'm not i'm not demeaning what they are doing what i'm saying they just stood there and snapped how many people tell lies respectfully speaking social media people tell lies full of lies and nonsense unnecessary nonsense because most people want to at least feel like they are growing pastors what of the membership we exaggerate you can have members as small as part of this auditorium and say i had fifty thousand people attend the meeting and ten thousand people were healed hundred people got up from the wheelchair and nobody knows no the lie is unnecessary it may not be as a result of insincerity but is that passion to show we are growing and finally who does not want his life to count i do 
you do we all want to know that our lives count you're going to pray and say father everything it makes for these six things to be represented in my life i pray by your mercy make it happen for me please go ahead and pray have an understood fulfillment then god is not afraid to make you successful go ahead and pray lord all that it takes every physical expression of security of dynamism and variety whatever will help to enhance my sense of significance whatever oh god will help to provide that platform for love and acceptance whatever will enhance my perceiving that i am growing the bible calls it the things that make for life and godliness please pray from your depth the depth of your heart lord do not withhold your hand from making it available for some of you it will mean a new house all the same for some of you it will mean a new job for some of you it will mean a miracle of children for some of you it will mean god granting you access to the nations provided you understand that none of them in themselves give you fulfillment then he can give you the privilege of tasting of that which makes for success by every standard everyone that asks it receive it lift your voice and pray now with this understanding you can ask for a house you can ask for a car you can ask for relationships with this understanding you can ask for a political position because your self-worth is not tied to it they are expressions of success but you know that above and beyond them your peace is your greatest asset ask that you will receive so that your joy might be full someone is asking lord do not withhold your hand away from me let me have manifest in my life the things that make for life and godliness financial supplies manifestations of favor open door increases of all kinds in ministry in life in family in business send them oh god speedily to my life hallelujah let me pray for you now you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger leaving deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are You are everything. Regardless the houses and the cars. You are everything. Regardless the positions and the titles. You are everything. Regardless the names and the achievements. You are everything. Now listen to me. You are standing here, you came to church, you came to receive. And while you heard me preach, especially when I said, if you have three hours to the end of your life, do you have that peace? I believe with all my heart that someone listening to me, whilst I spoke, the Holy Ghost told you he's speaking to you. Listen to this preacher. He's probing into whether you have thrown away your peace or not even received it. 
now listen everybody what i forgot to tell you is that peace is not a thing peace is the name of a person he is jesus peace is more than a feeling peace is the life of god in you you are here and you need that peace once you heard me teach you said this is truly why god brought me for some of you god has been working in you for weeks maybe you've thrown away church thing you're not serious remember i'm not scaring you but i bring to your remembrance again the three hour talk that there were actual people not a parable who left just about two weeks or a week ago and they had plans just like you did some of them sadly left without peace some of them today are rejoicing in a place so beautiful and great some of them are joining the cloud of witnesses as they cheer this preacher speaking and are saying as you hear his voice if they had a chance to talk to you they would not tell you hurry up with the investments if they had a chance to talk to you some being your loved ones they will say listen to this preacher behind the foolishness of what he's saying is eternal wisdom hear me the prince of peace is calling you tonight young old rich poor male female he's calling you and giving you a chance i know you have a car but you need peace i know you have a house i respect your pedigree and your achievements you may be inside you may be outside whether you are having this peace for the first time or you threw it away in pursuit for other things and you're saying now i know this asset that the world cannot take i'm going to count just one two three because of our time i'd like you to come and stand here and let the prince of peace reintroduce you to a kind of peace that is greater than everything i begin my counting run one koinonia are you celebrating them you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you are everything sing it one more time you are we have one more minute for you come there's still space for you win that war tonight he will give you houses beyond your imagination he will give you the things that money can buy beyond your imagination but above and beyond it hear me beloved people peace personified calls you peace is not a senator peace is not a president peace is not a bank manager peace is not a counselor peace is jesus he calls you to himself and he gives you himself some of you are crying please help that woman listen to me i can tell you when you find peace there is absolutely nothing that can take away that peace except you let it go when you have a house plus peace you have something worth clapping for when you have a degree plus peace you have something worth clapping for when you have children in marriage plus peace you have something worth clapping for when you have achievements plus peace you know why because only the achievements can be taken the peace cannot be taken not by any system not by any witchcraft ladies and gentlemen i salute all of you who are standing here before me thank you for your courage and for those who are following across the globe 
you are probably listening in your office in your home or a group just listening and while the holy spirit is speaking to these ones he's also speaking to you probably you are listening to the rebroadcast and the holy spirit is telling you listen to this preacher it is me speaking through him do not harden your heart as you hear him speak it's an opportunity he's given to you to make your ways right and all the overflows those who are standing I want you to know that this is a sincere don't just come out and emotionally lift your hands recite a poem and go back guard and treasure these that you find now for the rest of your life and someday when we stand before Jesus we will hug and greet one another and say the house remained on earth but the peace brought you here mm. the degree remained on earth but the peace brought you here if you ever leave this earth safely there is one lift that takes you it is not your house it is not your degrees it is peace lift your right hand high above your head as a symbol of your surrender and please say this after me as loud as you can and as clear as you can hear me say Lord Jesus tonight I acknowledge you as my Prince of Peace you are the peace that I have been looking for right now I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification I believe that I am your child based on my confession that Jesus is my Savior my Lord my King and indeed my peace I declare that the power of sin Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I receive this gift of your life. I receive this gift of peace. And I declare that from now till forever, you are my God, you are my peace. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Dear Prince of Peace, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your hand. We thank you for your mighty, the workings of your spirit. You have brought these ones tonight because you are the Prince of Peace. They have heard your word and they have come to receive of that peace that money cannot buy. Jesus, based on their confessions and by the authority of scripture, I declare them recipients of your peace and recipients of the life of God. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that your sins are forgiven and that he gives you a new beginning. There is a restfulness and satisfaction that you have from today that nothing else will ever take in your life. Now, alongside this peace you have received, I pray for you that every other thing you need that makes for life and for godliness, may God who gives all things freely, may he be benevolent even on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and increase you amen and amen please look at me god bless you may i please request that you move towards my right very quickly there is a counselor waving his hands they are waving their hands they'll just have a minute with you just give you a gift and some information and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you so much the lord bless you the lord bless you the lord bless you koinonia is this the best you can do for them let's celebrate jesus the prince of peace Let's celebrate Jesus, the shalom of God. I'm about to speak over your life and then we're done for this service. Peace, when trouble blows, Jehovah sees... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you